Hello, in this presentation, we will be working with the pay bill function within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been following along with us, we will be continuing on with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will be working here with the pay bills. If you have the backup file for this location in the problem, you can restore that by going to the File tab, Open and Restore. Note we are entering new data, therefore it's good to be on the same point, make sure we're on the same page. We can do that by restoring a data file as close as possible to the current section we are in. But if you've been following along, we'll be there as well. If not, you just want to see what this icon is, this pay bills, that's what we'll take a look at too. Uh, we are entering data, putting in new data here, so we'd like to end up you know, at the same point at the end of this process uh, so putting a, a new data set at each point can really help us within that process so in this one we're going to be working on the pay bills now when we see this icon here it says pay bills we are going to assume that we are going to pay bills typically with a check so what the process here tends to be within the home tab in the vendors tab and if you're not in the home tab here to get to that you're going to go to company home uh, company home tab I also like having the open windows open over here where you would go to the view and then uh, open windows to see those open windows as well then we're gonna go over here we're taking a look at this pay bill and so when we think about pay bills we're thinking about paying bills with a check so typically the process within the vendor function this being the payable function gives us a nice flow chart within the home tab is usually that we are going to enter a bill and then we're going to go through the pay bills this is a useful function when writing checks for a few different reasons one is that uh, it allows us to enter all the checks at one point in time two it allows us to enter the checks or enter the bills at one point in time and then enter the bills at the point in time they are received even if that's not the same point as payment that typically being better format for the accrual basis method so we want to enter the bill when we receive them, even if we're not going to typically be putting in the check at that point in time. It also allows us to choose which checks we want to pay uh, as they become due, even though the bills have already been entered into the system. That could be a useful item when we're managing which checks we want to write. Note, however, there are different ways that we can write the checks uh, depending on what type of system we are working with within QuickBooks, what type of system we have set up in order to enter our data into QuickBooks. Another system we looked at last time is to write checks. Just use this write check icon and that will open up a check like so. And we can write checks. It looks just like this within this icon in this format. And that will of course decrease the checking account and it'll record the other account to what other, whatever other account was selected. I'm gonna close this back out. Another way that we could enter checks would be going to the banking uh, up top and then going down to use register and then use the check register to enter the checks. This would be a way to enter checks typically if we're not printing those checks from the QuickBooks system. If we are printing checks from the QuickBooks system, this method is a pretty good way to do that because it can then allow us to list all the checks that need printing allow us then to choose the amount of checks we need to print in order to put them into the printer because we are going to have to use external checks if that's our process and then print those checks. So in this case, we only have uh, our one vendor that we enter data into that we owe money on from an earlier transaction, that being the start of the company. We opened a new company. We put a beginning balance into a particular vendor. Now we're going to pay off that to beginning balance. So we're going to go to the pay bills icon here and we see that we have our one vendor Epiphone that we owe the 15 to the 15,000. That being from uh, when we set up the beginning balances within our new company, we still have this Epiphone that we owed. We put that into the beginning balance and now we can show that we're going to pay that off. If uh, there's one item or multiple items, what we're going to do is check off that item to, to indicate that that's the item that we want to be paid. Also note that there's going to be a couple I options we could look through here. If we say that show bills, show bills, we typically show all or I would typically look at all. 
But if we have a lot of bills in here and we want to limit the amount of bills we're looking through, we might just want to limit it to the due on or before a specific time period. That giving us a, a better idea, a better quick view of what we want to look at. We can also uh, use some other filtering options and sorting options. Again, if we had a lot of, of bills in there, those could be useful for us to decide which, which ones we're looking to pay at this point in time. If we tab through this, we're going to check off that this is going to be the item we will be paying. This is going to be the due date in accordance with what was set up. In this case, the beginning balance was set up in this format. We have the vendor. We have the amount due. And then we're going to have the amount uh, to pay, which will be the same in this point at this time. We have some other uh, options down here. The clear selection, of course, would clear everything that has been selected in terms of this one check that we have at this time. We have the go to bill, the set discount and uh, the set credits. We're not going to be dealing with any of those options within this setup. We have the payment date. That's typically going to be the current date that we're, of course, writing the checks at. We, however, here are writing the checks as of a future date. That date will remain, in this case, uh, January 28th, 2021. That date being from the prior transaction we did within this problem. That's one of the defaults we chose for this particular problem. Another default oftentimes is just the current date, uh, which, is, which I believe is the default option. Uh, we chose, in this case, to keep the prior date as one of the defaults because we're working in the future in a problem such as this. We then have the method. Uh, in this case, we're gonna have a check versus a credit card. Then if you were to print these checks, you'd wanna put keep print checks here. You'd have to order the checks outside of QuickBooks. So you'd have the pre-ordered checks that we'd have outside uh, that, that we'd have our check numbers on it and our bank account information. We'd have to then put those checks into the printer in the proper format. And then once we record this, it will generate those checks and print those checks from those pre-printed uh, format. You, you got to have the pre-printed checks. One reason is just another check figure on our internal controls. Having those check numbers on the pre-printed checks gives us a really good internal control. In our case, we're just going to assign the check number. We're not going to go in and um, actually print the checks. So we're going to choose assign check number. Now, as you do that, you want to you want to make sure you have the right check number. You would think the the system would just kind of uh, pick the next check in order when we say pay bills, but uh, it it makes us manually put in that check number. So we want to make sure we have the checking account selected. This being our major check checking account typically, and then once we select the pay selected bills, if we assigned a, a check number, then it's going to ask us what that check number should be. So if I select this right now, for example, it says, uh, let me assign the check number here. Let QuickBooks assign the check number. Uh, so if we select the default here, it'll most likely go to the next check. If I select this option, then we can manually put in the check number. If there's multiple checks, then it'll start from that check number and continue on with those checks. So if you don't know what that check number is and you want to double check it, you got to close this. We could go to the check register and see what check number we are on just to make sure it ties out to our, our checkbook. If we want to, we have to close this out so that we can open the register. So I'm going to have to enter this data back in, which is just basically checking that box. So we're going to close this out and I'm going to say, uh, we're not going to save it at this point. We're just going to re-enter the data, then go to banking, then go to use register. We got the checking account. We're going to select the checking account. And the only thing we're looking for, we're saying there's the last check. So that means we are on check uh, 1010, 1010. That's going to be the check number we want to make sure is assigned next. So we're going to go ahead and say close this. We're going to go back into pay bills. We can then check this back off. Everything is as it should be. We're going to change the to print to assign check numbers. It's going to the checking account as it should. So we're going to say pay selected bills, pay selected bills. And then we're going to assign the check number, which will be 1010. What we just saw was the next check number in our series. The check date is correct. The payee is correct. So we're going to say, okay, when we record this, it should write a check that should appear in our check register, should decrease the uh, checking account balance, 
it should also decrease the amounts owed to this particular vendor, Epiphone. So that would decrease the accounts payable. So let's do that and see if that's what happens. We're going to say OK. And it's going to record that. And we're going to say payment summary. Here's going to be the payment summary. We're going to say done on that. And then let's go to the, let's take a look at this in a few different formats. One, let's take a look at the check register and see if it recorded that within our check register as we would assume it would. So we're going to go to the uh, banking, go to use register, and we see the check register here. That's the one we want, checking account. We're going to say OK. And then we see that next check has been generated. So it's in accordance with our, our sequence. We see the bill payment as the icon here. It was a check that was created just like these. However, this was in response to a bill payment telling us that we're tying those things out. We're tying out the bill and the check, whereas this one was more of a standalone check, which had not been entered as a bill before then entering the check. Then we can check the reports and see if this has been uh, decreased on the balance sheet in terms of cash and has affected the accounts, re accounts payable going down. So we're going to go up to reports up top and take a look at that. We'll go to the company and financial. We're going to go scrolling down to the balance sheet. We will choose the custom report so that we can change the date range so that when we drill down on the dates, we can then get a date range. So it's going to be 01, 01, 17 to 12, 31, 1, uh, I'm sorry, 01, 01, 21. We're working in the future to 12, 31, 21. This is the year we will be working in at all times. We're going to say OK. Then we're going to see if it has affected the checking account as we would assume it to. So we're going to double click on the checking account. And there's the 15 right there. So we're going to double click on that. And notice it goes to our check icon here. So it doesn't go to that same screen that we had when we had the pay bill screen. When we paid the bill, a check was generated based on the information from that screen. So even though we used that screen, the driving form that QuickBooks is using is the check. So we'll close this back out and take a look at the other side. I'm going to close this back out, go back to the balance sheet. So we have the balance sheet back open over here. The other side would be the liability of accounts payable. So if we scroll down to the liability, we should have paid off the liabilities. Note here that uh, we don't have the accounts payable here. What does that mean? means we have paid off all the liabilities. We don't have anything. Accounts payable is a zero. Now, if we want to see that within accounts payable, that it goes down, a couple places we can go. First, let's try to look at the list of accounts. So we go to lists, chart of accounts up top. This will give us all accounts, whether they are open or closed, whether they have zero balances or not. And then if we take a look at the other current liabilities, such as uh, payroll payable, we've got loans payable, we're looking for accounts payable. Sorry, it's not other current liabilities, the liability of accounts payable, accounts type. If we double click on that, even though it has zero, we should get a register, and there's the register. So the only activity we have in the payable is this 15 that was owed, now paid, now back down to zero. If we close this out and close this out, we should also see this on the vendor detail or the, the accounts payable detail. Let's take a look at that. We'll go to reports up top. We're going to go to vendors and payables. And we're going to see the vendor balance detail. Vendor balance detail. Change the date range. Well, we don't really need to change it. It's going, it's going to show all the activity that we've gotten so far. There's what was owed due to the beginning balance we put into this particular vendor. Here's the payment that we made. Double clicking on that, we see that check once again. If we close this back out, close this back out, going to go back to the home page. So that once again is the pay bill item. Pay bill typically being used after the bills have been entered. Pay bill is a format of generating a check typically a check that we will write either through the system within QuickBooks or assign a check in order to record the decrease in our checking account so we can enter this data within the system, hopefully reconcile then the bank account using that data 
and create the financial statements with it.